but <laughs> how have you severely burned out? Yeah. yeah. How have you found social networking has worked for you, and how like has it promoted for uh, Sinestra Studios? Uh, well. I mean, being as the studio opened up in November, you know, we're going on like five months, six months, pretty much. We're hitting our half year anniversary coming up. It's uh, it's been very positive. You know, a lot, a lot of people they they embrace the talent, and it's with all of us are on the same boat. All the rock bands and metal bands that are here in the city, or in Connecticut, or around the Eastern Seaboard, or anywhere in the country, they're all up and coming. So. The fact of the matter is that everybody has to look at it on the same level. You want to get to the top, you have to work with other people who are trying to get up there. And through that process, you bring people with you. You know, projects become these gigantic marketing schemes for everybody. You get promotional and marketing, so does the band. People take interest. They, they, you know, it creates fan bases. It creates a lot of new ideas and a whole bunch of opportunities. So it's been it's been very positive for five months of work, and I can't honestly complain. Not right now. No way. Absolutely, we understand. We understand. I mean, FN Radio only survives because you know of the internet. Like we wouldn't be able to do what we're doing. We're an internet station, and like social networking is like the best way to like just go. I mean, you can just network with anybody. We met so many people down at Music Corps, and like, you were one of them, and like tons of other people. It was a great fucking event. And the internet is like what made everybody connect. Networking is the best. Precisely, you know. The internet is working wonders for everybody. I just wish that, you know, people can actually start to learn what talent and, you know, work really is instead of just trying to get a quick fix. No doubt. That's the only thing that troubles society nowadays. It troubles me big time, but, you know, I, I'm sure that other people can agree with me on that. Yeah, definitely. Factor. Absolutely. Definitely. Everybody here, for sure, man. We put in a hell of a lot of hours to do what we do. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and that's why you are where you are today. Uh, that's right. <laughs> that's right. That's very true. Um, tell us about your YouTube since we're talking about the internet and social networking you just uh, made that video with the Dark Knight and I think that you really focused around Heath Ledger's character and I really 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 liked it yeah it was awesome so please tell us more about your I'm sorry your YouTube and all your videos and whatnot. okay Uh, YouTube began you know that was uh, opened up I opened that as a personal thing you know I put my work from college on there and I went with it and I started, you know, seeing film and I started understanding and learning, you know, education is everywhere. Film is one of them. You know, you don't have to go to a film school to not learn about film. So I took it upon my business to take a challenge and learn how to make movie trailers that, with, that were great movies, remind you, great movies, but I felt that the trailers were kind of subpar. So I took movies like I Am Legend and... Uh, And The Dark Knight, I just recently did that as of yesterday, as of pretty much 12 a.m. And what was the other one? Oh, War of the Worlds. I'm a a big Steven Spielberg fan, but I really, really hated how cliche his movie trailer was for that movie. So I just, I take it upon my business to do epic movie trailers. And I find my own music and I compile the music and I just edit the crap out of all the movies. And, you know, it's it's time-consuming, but it's worth it. I mean, the positive outcomes that come from it are just, you know, they're remarkable. I went on a, I, speaking of which, I went on a two-month hiatus with movie trailers, and I got, like, around 20 people asking me, where are your movie trailers? You need to do some more. What the fuck is going on? You're slacking. Start putting work. And, you know, I, I put work in, and it's, people people see the movie work, and they see the passion that's involved and being able to unite music and cinema together cohesively without you know stagnating the final product and that's that's a really tough thing to do absolutely absolutely i mean it's all about putting in work and you could definitely tell you put in a lot of work for that dark knight video guys what did you think of it yeah definitely kick it i Mm -hmm. thought it was amazing i mean and i know sitting here doing video i've done that shit it's it's time consuming and fun and frustrating at the same time because like you're like always this like an inch closer to finishing but then you find that thing you're like ah you know what i don't really like that i'm gonna change it 
and they just stuck there for hours and hours. Yeah, yeah, exactly. I mean, Lex has sat here with me for shit. Lex, how many hours did we sit here and do production? Mo as well. I mean, we've sat Absolutely. here. Absolutely, we've been like in the studio, and I've been like whining and like I'm dying. Can we leave, please? I can't do this anymore. It's so <laughs> late at night. <laughs> It gets, it I gets know that crazy. feeling. <laughs> when one project takes two weeks to do and it's only three minutes long. Yep. I, I know that feeling. That's, yep. that's the price of perfection. You know, if you want to make it, you got to put the time in there. You got to put the frustration. You got to go around with the pimples and the acne and then come out looking clean because you succeeded. So, you know. Yeah. It, it all pays off in the end. You just got to put your time and effort in it. So. What, what do you think your like biggest challenge so far being an internet business? What do you think your biggest challenge has been? My biggest challenge is marketing. I, without a doubt. I mean, I managed to hit a couple hundred people who are interested in the work and able to participate and take time out to critique and criticize the work. But being able to cause a stir is the biggest problem. And, I mean, you know, you get a fan base but spreading out beyond that is always the toughest part you have to turn people towards your way like selling snow to eskimos that's the biggest thing that's uh, actually a really good metaphor and you know i am totally fit we actually had a meeting just recently and talked about this pretty much at ad, ad nauseum as far as like yeah. what we could do to try to branch out beyond what we've got and we love our fans and our listeners and but it's like how do we get even more. bigger. Yeah. You have to be greedy. You have to get more, but you have to do it with taste. You know, yeah. I understand that completely, especially coming from a radio station. You know, you guys have a lot of, well, excuse me, way more competition than anybody else. You know? Yeah, like, we, I mean, we've got terrestrial radio, we've got internet radio, and satellite. And satellite radio, and it's just like, oh. Plus MP3 dun, dun, players. Dun. MP, MP3 players, Pandora's, Last FM's, they all, you know, <laughs> it's different, <laughs> but craziness. So, what got you into the music scene itself, like the indie music scene? 